I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we meet and pay our respects to elders past and present. I'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you all to La Trobe University, to our audience, and in particular to our Grand Challenge teams, their families and faculty at participating universities. Now, innovation is critical to solving the global issues that we face as a society and universities in partnership with industry and communities have a critical role to play, both in turning the research we do into solutions that impact society and the environment and in training the next generation of innovators. We're about to hear from some up and coming innovators and entrepreneurs who are using digital technologies to solve real life problems that they have identified through the Grand Challenge program. So how does our Grand Challenge program work? Well, it's all about supporting our teams of undergraduate students to consider innovation and business thinking. Each team identifies a project concept based on a problem, creates a three minute video pitch of their concept. Those pitches that are accepted are selected and supported by a group of Latrobe staff drawn from our Center for Technology Innovation, our School of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, our business school, and the Latrobe Accelerator Program. Each team then builds a working prototype of their concept and solution and submits their solution to the judging panel. Our panel of expert judges is looking for strategic insight into identifying a problem and developing a techn technological solution, as well as the skills to build a working prototype on budget. The winning team will receive an all expenses mentorship stay at La Trobe University in Melbourne to work with some of our best innovators. This will be for a period of two weeks and arranged, of course, once international borders are reopened. So what did our 2020 Grand Challenge program look like? It started 12 months ago in November 2019 with 57 teams registering from 14 universities in India, in China, in Indonesia and in Sri Lanka. The teams at the first stage were supported for a series of training webinars to develop and to refine a concept proposal. Following pitching of those proposals with the three minute videos, 11 teams were selected for the next stage and each of those was supported with an investment of between 250 and 1000 Australian dollars to build a prototype solution that addresses their problem and to submit that through a video to the judging panel. Of the 11 teams, nine successfully constructed a prototype. So these are the nine teams that our final judging panel uh, considered and are here today to compete for the accolade of the 2020 Grand Challenge champions. Now, of course, the fact that all of our teams are incredibly smart and tech savvy creates a very difficult task for our panel of expert judges to select a winner. There are expert judges drawn from uh, the Centre for Technology and Fusion, our Engineering and Mathematical Sciences School, the uh, La Trobe Accelerator Programme and the Business School. A very difficult job that group had over the last recent weeks. Now, if we can go to the next slide, we're going to hear from our Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Industry Engagement, Professor Susan Dodds, who will share some highlights of the 2020 Grand Challenge competition. Rapid growth across Asia in the major cities means new challenges that need to have smarter solutions. Students who participate in this competition will have an opportunity to engage multidisciplinary teams. Those teams will help them to fill out their understanding, their experience, their education, and to work together to collaborate to find solutions that will help us in the vastly changing environment. Smart Step is an array of smart tiles that are able to harvest microenergy and help daily commuters to experience more convenient commuting during rush hours. Smart Step tiles are able to count the number of people in each passenger car and send information to the commuter operator when a passenger car has exceeded its capacity limit. The total number of accidental deaths by cooking gas in India is greater than 3000 ever since 2014. Our solution is a simple smart device to attach to any stove which provides live status of stove, alert if there is a gas leak, remote switch off from anywhere using your app, timer to switch off the stove if you are in a hurry. Instead of visiting the doctor, one can get diagnosed from the comfort of their homes. This is done by sending the readings collected by our device to a doctor who would prescribe any necessary treatment. 
This is the basic layout of a device, followed by a sneak peek into the code which was used to acquire the various health parameters from the sensors. The data is then sent to the cloud, where abnormalities in any of the health parameters are detected with the help of a condition which is set based on the threshold values. In large cities, one of the main problems in water conservation is the inability to manage water usage effectively. Many a times the water faucets are kept open for a long time and are not closed properly. We have built an intelligent device which monitors and optimizes the water supply and also detects transmission loss due to leaks or damages in the pipeline in real time. Due to the increasing urbanization, new routes are being created every day. And remembering each route is a tiresome job. To make this task easier, maps have been designed. But most of the riders feel it inconvenient to constantly pick their phone up and check for the route. To solve this problem, we have designed a pair of gloves and a mobile app that can communicate with each other through Bluetooth. Due to various economical and other climate changes, many farmers abandoned farming as it was in the past time. We proposed the hydroponic system. The proposed system tries to avoid the much needed maintenance work and try to provide all the requirements automatically with the less amount of maintenance. A smart pollution mask designed to protect you against air pollution and provide real-time data on the air pollution level. Incorporated with an AQI sensor, Air8 will collect big data of the AQI from your surroundings and other regions. The problem of reducing electricity cost without affecting consumer comfort in the smart home scenario equipped with PV panel has been solved by automated, intelligent and smart energy management system. It measures the power and use QTT protocol to upload the measured power every 30 seconds to AWS cloud. The earliest start time and latest finish time of appliances are extracted to learn consumption behavior of consumer. Now, before we hear who the winners are of this year's competition, I'm very pleased to introduce our keynote speaker, Ashok Mysore, who is the Vice President and Regional Head of Delivery and Operations at Infosys Limited. Ashok has almost 30 years of industry experience across telecommunications, the financial services, logistics, energy, utilities, and service industries. In his role, Ashok is responsible for developing a performance-driven culture amongst a group of diverse and talented individuals to achieve accelerated profitable growth by delivering value while continuously improving internal efficiencies. Who better to talk at a uh, event about innovation and training of, it, of innovation? Ashok, a very warm welcome to La Trobe. Thank you, Chris. So I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, wherever we are in Australia, um, joining this uh, event. I pay my respects to their elders, uh, past, present, and emerging. Um, at the outset, I would like to you know, thank uh, you, Professor uh, Chris, uh, Professor Speed, and also Professor Anirudha Desai uh, for inviting me and uh, providing this opportunity to uh, address you all. Um, so I won't actually keep us waiting for too long because I think the exciting news is to follow, uh, and I'm actually uh, very keenly waiting uh, to hear uh, this year's uh, winners. Um, see, one of the fundamental dilemmas of uh, modern society is the unpredictable um, and the effect of a rapid technological development. Um, the consequences are momentous, uh, not only on the level of an enterprise, uh, but also on the level of an entire industry or uh, society. Um, I mean, the funny part is that uh, uh, you know, disruptive innovation <clears throat> seems to have an internal conflict, isn't it? Um, innovation for many of us uh, is a positive thing, uh, while disruption has not so positive connotation to it. Um, but, you know, technology uh, disruption over uh, you know, in, a, in, the, in the previous decade has disrupted uh, all the businesses and industries. However, in the last uh, a decade technology uh, has uh, disrupted it, its its own self uh, and and the industry itself. Um, so we've heard uh, of all the emerging technologies um, like you know AI, ML, multi cloud computing, uh, AR, VR, IoT, data sciences, etc. And and these are really shaping up um, the world as we see and uh, the way we actually uh, uh, yeah, you know tend to receive uh, services. 
So because of the above, the workforce for the future is changing as well. So it is about continuous learning. Uh, it's about experimenting, rapid prototyping, ability to connect the dots, um, you know, being resourceful. You know, uh, I think today uh, people have access to information um, and it, it, as, as it has never been before. Um, and the question, I guess, is how do you identify and assemble software components to deliver solutions? I think that's the key to it. So to maximize the full potential of uh, technology, organizations are uh, positioning IT as a core enabler to the businesses, uh, uh, co-creating value with uh, external stakeholders. Um, and you know the best businesses are creating a network effect by building collaborative ecosystems of partners, uh, customers, and external stakeholders. I think previously we heard um, uh, you know, Chris talk about uh, the ecosystem being the academia, uh, the government, and the industry itself. And I believe a very active collaboration within this ecosystem will actually produce um, some uh, unimaginable technology solutions, um, which will help uh, on, uh, on, on you know, solving business problems. What we also see is that the cities and the metropolitan areas are actually becoming the powerhouses of economic growth, right? Uh, contributing about 60% of our global GDP. Um, however, the flip side is also that they also account for about 70% of the global carbon emissions, over 60% of resource use, et cetera. So if you see United Nations goals, uh, one of the goals is to make cities inclusive, to make it safe, resilient, and uh, sustainable. This is also reflected in uh, enterprise as well, right? So beyond non-financial, uh, like, uh, you know, beyond the financial uh, parameters like uh, profits and revenue growth, et cetera, uh, today organizations that focus on ESG, which is the environmental, social, and governance issues, are valued at higher multiples compared to traditional companies uh, in the tech sector. So ESG criteria are used by socially conscious investors and shareholders uh, to screen investments and to assess a company's impact on the world. Um, and where I'm leading to that is, I mean, the, the core of the opportunity that is provided today uh, and, and what uh, you know, our participants today have focused around uh, sustainability, smart cities, I think is, is, is extremely important today in the society. Let me just touch very quickly on the startup ecosystem and entrepreneurship. Um, uh, entrepreneurship plays a vital role in driving economic recovery. Um, and this is through you know, creation of innovative new businesses, um, which actually leads to creating highly skilled jobs. Uh, study shows that by increasing the startups in our economy, it can actually create, I mean, I'm, and these are the statistics I'm quoting from the state of Victoria, uh, you know, of about, you know, 15,000 plus net new jobs. Um, and and that, is, that, that is phenomenal. And I think that will be something that is welcome uh, today, especially today where uh, the unemployment rate uh, as it is, is, at, is at the uh, highest. Um, you know, because of what we experienced through the, you know, through the COVID period and displacements and things like that. Um, the Victorian startup ecosystem, I, I just want to give a few, uh, uh, you know, anecdotes around it. Um, just to, you know, impress upon the point that the startup ecosystem is extremely healthy. Um, and uh, the Victorian startup ecosystem uh, has close to about uh, 1900 startups. Um, and it actually boasts a value of, I think, close to $7 billion. And this is up from about $3.5 billion only last year. So it's literally doubled. Um, and the ecosystem is beginning to flourish. It is beginning to mature. Um, and if you look at some statistics like, you know, 12% of the companies today in the startup economy are in the growth phase, as opposed to 4%, which was only a couple of years back. 41% um, of these startups earn anywhere between a million to $10 million compared to only 10% in 2017. Um, a key statistic is one of the three founders, you know, one of three founders are born overseas. One third of the founders are actually female. So, you know, when you really talk about gender diversity, 
uh, when you really talk about women in leadership, you know, women in tech leadership, et cetera, I mean, the startup economy is a great example of that. 60% of the, you know, these sec, uh, uh, the startups are found in primarily, uh, you know, four uh, sectors, which is basically a data point for Victoria, but this obviously will differ uh, elsewhere, which is around, you know, health, uh, enterprise and corporate services um, in data analytics and commerce. Um, and almost half of the revenue for this actually comes from primarily commerce and financial services. What this is suggesting is that the ecosystem is becoming less fragmented. It is starting to consolidate it into you know, a smaller but still diverse set of sectors that appear to play more to uh, a local competitive advantage. Um, so in basically you know, concluding, what I would like to impress upon is the technology enthusiasts, like most of you, you know, are really good at problem solving. So problem solving is, you know, kind of becoming commoditized. Uh, as I also said that, you know, information uh, is at your fingertips, uh, there's availability, you know, like open source, uh, et cetera, which can help you solve problems. What is important is to use techniques like design thinking to identify the problem. You frame questions differently so that problem solving through innovation addresses the core uh, principles of innovation, which is around desirability, feasibility, and viability. And these are extremely important, especially when you have a startup mindset, because no point in creating a product which is either uh, you know, extremely expensive, um, or it, you, know, you just cannot actually use it in a particular um, uh, situation. So the DFV principles as it stands is important. And, and, and the best part is that the grand challenge uh, for 2020 uh, which is an opportunity provided by the CTI um, of uh, Latrobe University is at the center of this philosophy. Um, academia plays a critical role in fostering an environment to produce individuals who can think differently and focus more on the application of these learnings. Today, all of you, I mean, when I say today, you know, through this journey, all of you have actually demonstrated uh, exceptional technical entrepreneurial and uh, leadership qualities uh, in, 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 in this event. Um, what I'd like to do is to wish all of you the very best um, uh, and hope to see that your ideas will manifest into a successful startup to solve a larger community and uh, societal problems. So congratulations to all the participants and I'm eagerly waiting to uh, you know, see the announcement of winners. Um, so wish you all the best. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, Ashok, for a very inspiring address and for sharing with us your thoughts on the benefits of innovation, the role of collaboration in the innovation system. And I think most importantly, you reminded us of the importance of um, reflecting on the UN sustainability goals in uh, the way we actually solve problems and develop sustainable solutions. It's now time everyone to announce our two runners up. So I'd like to start with our second runner up, now, second runner up is Team Smart Step Jakarta. If we can go to the next slide, thank you. Um, for their concept, Smart Step, which addresses the problem of determining the passenger load in public transport systems. So let's just see a short video from Team Smart Step to describe their concept. Smart Step is an array of smart tiles that are able to harvest microenergy and help daily commuters to experience more convenient commuting during rush hours. Smart Step tiles are able to count the number of people in each passenger car and send information to the commuter operator when a passenger car has exceeded its capacity limit. This could help reduce the overloaded crowds by adding more commuter line units into the necessary track. Congratulations again to our second runner-up, Team Smart Step Jakarta. Now, our first runner-up, our first runner-up is Team Hero EP for their concept Air Raid, which addresses the problem of monitoring an individual's exposure to air pollution in cities. Congratulations to our first runner-up, Team Hero EP. Let's hear from their video. Thank you. A smart pollution mask designed to protect you against air pollution and provide real-time data on the air pollution level. Incorporated with an AQI sensor, AirAid will collect big data of the AQI from your surroundings and other regions. 
Therefore, it helps you to decide whether you should wear the smart pollution mask or not. With the user's mobility, Air8 will provide better real-time data. It may provide location of pollution and even the main sources. Two absolutely fantastic runners up in this year's competition. That would have made the uh, job of a judging panel in selecting the winner um, incredibly difficult. I'd like to now introduce Professor Richard Speed, the Deputy Vice Chancellor International at La Trobe University to say a few words and to announce the winning team. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Chris. And can I also thank Ashok for generously giving up his time to join us today. Unfortunately, our Vice Chancellor couldn't be here with us today as he was called away at short notice, but I was absolutely delighted when he asked me to present this award in his place. La Trobe is proud to be offering a unique initiative like the Technology Infusion Grand Challenge, which encourages entrepreneurship and innovation at undergraduate level. The challenge provides a global platform for students to showcase their skills and talents acquired during their study. Applying resources through research and innovation to delivering solutions to socially relevant problems is in La Trobe's DNA, including important areas like smart cities. For over a decade, our Center for Technology Infusion has been delivering field-ready smart city projects with government and industry and multidisciplinary areas such as transport safety and mobility, energy and infrastructure management, digital supply chains, healthcare, and smart farming. We founded the Asian Smart Cities Research and Innovation Network, which now involves more than 150 researchers across La Trobe and top Indian universities, Bits Palani and IIT Kampur along with a broad range of industry champions. Through this network, we are collectively investing over $13.5 million to launch a targeted PhD program focusing on multidisciplinary problem solving. This will tackle challenges in infrastructure and technology, mobility and transport, health and well-being, urban planning, energy, water and waste, and more. La Trobe is proud to be supporting innovators and entrepreneurs such as the ones you've just heard about. But my job is to actually present the prize. So let's move on and look at our winner. Okay, so the winner of this year's Grand Challenge is Team SAK from Amrita Vishwa Vijapitham University. And they won it for their project on smart gloves. So congratulations to Team SAK. The judges noted that your entry addressed a major issue with driver distraction during navigation, improving the, uh, the efficiency of commercial drivers and addressing a safety issue at the same time. Let's look at how they demonstrated a prototype solution to this problem. Due to the increasing urbanization, new routes are being created every day. And remembering each route is a tiresome job. To make this task easier, maps have been designed, but most of the riders feel it inconvenient to constantly pick their phone up and check for the route. Frequent navigation checks on the roads while driving increases their travel time and may also cause accidents due to the distraction by the phone. To solve this problem, we have designed a pair of gloves and a mobile app that can communicate with each other through Bluetooth. So could I invite the team leader of the winning team SAK, Anudeep, to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we are very, we team SAK are very much happy to be the winner of uh, technology grand infusion challenge. Uh, I'm out of words now. Uh, we are very happy. We have uh, tried for last uh, three months for winning this challenge. Uh, coming to the challenge, we have seen many hackathons or challenges, but none of them have provided us fund for developing our prototype before announcing the winner. But uh, it the fund provided by Laterob University helped us a lot in development of the product. And finally, we wanted to thank each and every one of the Latrop University uh, for continuous support and encouragement throughout the event. Thank you. So in addition to the winner's two-week mentorship um, stay at La Trobe University, here with the Center for Technology Infusion, I'm also really pleased to announce that the La Trobe Accelerator Program was so impressed by Team SAK's idea and their achievements that they want to help support bringing this innovative idea to life. So the Latrobe Accelerator team will offer to mentor the winners for free and present them to our global market partner in India, T-Hub. So congratulations again, Team SAK. I really look forward to welcoming you to our campus 
and uh, to seeing you succeed at Latrobe. And to our runners up, congratulations also. Chris, back to you. Thank you, Richard, and uh, thank you, Anu Deep, for your uh, acceptance speech. Well done to all of the teams that participated in the competition this year. Congratulations to our runners up and to our winners, Team SAK. I hope you all agree that we've seen some amazing examples here today of innovation developed and implemented by some fantastic teams. I'd like to thank our speakers, Asok Mysore and Richard Speed, the wonderful La Trobe events team for their help in organizing the presentation today. And of course, Professor Arne Desai and his team at La Trobe's Center for Technology Infusion for running another fantastic year of Grand Challenges. Finally, I'll leave you by pointing out that the next round of the Grand Challenge program, our 2020-2021 competition is now open for registrations. I encourage you to enter and all of the details can be found via the link on the slide. Thank you again and have a wonderful weekend ahead.